we're heading to Pemberton where an Olympian is making an organic dream come true. We'll explore the world of yoga therapy and then teach you how to make almond milk. Organic restaurants, yoga and almond milk. Now that is a healthy recipe and it's all on this episode of Go See to Sky. Welcome to Go See to Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts in Whistler Village. Nestled in the heart of Pemberton is a unique restaurant filled with a tantalizing aroma and a welcoming charm. From hearty and healthy to savory and sweet, Solfeggio makes a variety of dishes all made with 100% local organic ingredients. And the restaurateur is an Olympian. This is exactly the look and so much more, really. You know, it came together quite organically, <laughs> of course, like the food. A warm, welcoming atmosphere mixed with a comfortable, rustic tone. This unique restaurant in Pemberton is simply inviting. Things just kind of came into our lives that we needed and um, we pulled out, you know, driftwood from the Lillooet Lake, things like that. It's just uh, absolutely perfect. It's a natural fit for Olympian Christy Richards, who retired from freestyle mogul skiing in 2012. After 10 years on Team Canada and 12 World Cup medals under her belt, it was time to make another childhood dream come true. Together with her fiancé, professional skier Mark Abma, they created Solfeggio. The meaning is the ancient harmonic scale. So it's actually a musical scale that has healing notes and healing frequencies. So hence, I took that word as one explanation of what we're trying to do here. From rustic wood tables Abma made from old pallets to salvage materials from a family home. From the setting to the ingredients themselves, Solfeggio is 100% organic. The goal is to create healing food that resonates with yourself and your body. The food is very, very local. We have farmers trudging in here day in and day out um, with their fresh kale and beets and carrots, you know, the beautiful produce that is um, grown here in the, in the soils of Pemberton. Healthy and delicious, Chef Erica Fisher works with what she's given from local farmers to create dishes rich with organic flavor like the Moroccan stew. Simmering on the stovetop, it's the source of the tantalizing aroma that fills the restaurant. We've got some local root vegetables in there, um, some carrots and parsnips, celery, sweet potatoes, um, and again, kind of using uh, Moroccan spices. So we've got some raw cacao, which is, again, really good for you. A perfect blend of warming flavors, all nutrient rich. Or you could try something lighter, homemade hummus, raw crackers and falafels on a unique share plate. We do this raw tabbouleh, which is really cool. Instead of using like a couscous or a grain, we actually pulse up raw cauliflower. Solfeggio's menu stems not only from available produce, it's powered by Richard's holistic nutrition and athletic background. But healthy doesn't mean you must forego dessert. Here, it's guilt-free. They incorporate a lot of superfoods and cater to a lot of the dietary needs like raw diets, vegan, vegetarian, um, gluten-free, everything like that. So uh, the treats are definitely one of our specialties. Nestled in the quiet town of Pemberton, some may consider it off the beaten path, but not when it comes to sustainability, another important aspect of a healthy diet and business. For me, it was about placing the restaurant as close to the farms as I possibly could. You know, this is a hub for those farms. Um, so if we can bring it in here and um, give that to the community, that's really, really what, what I want. Mixing a passion for health and wellness with a love of food and flavor, her dream has become a reality. She may be retired from mogul skiing, but this new adventure is nothing short of a podium finish for this Olympian. I would be lying to say that it's not going to be hard to sit on the sidelines, but at the same time, I am so fulfilled with uh, the passions that I'm now pursuing. Um, this restaurant, you know, I love being here and, and love giving that beautiful food to people.
Phil Feggio is open Monday to Saturday for dinners from 5 to 9 p.m. And they'll be open for lunches, smoothies, and fresh juices starting in May. It's the perfect place to head to after a day on the mountain. And that is where we're heading to in this next story. We're going to explore Whistler Black Homes Avalanche Awareness Tours. A perfect thing to check out if you want to explore more of the mountain and maybe even go beyond the boundary. Cougar shoots that are just up there, they're definitely avalanche terrain. They slide on a fairly regular basis. And avalanche awareness became an important part of Mikey Nixon's life when in his senior year of high school, four friends died in an avalanche. They went searching for early season snow. They didn't have the gear or the necessary knowledge to make um, the decisions that would have you know, brought them home safe at the end of the day. The incident had a lasting impact. For four years now, Mikey has volunteered to host free avalanche awareness tours, run daily at 12.30 p.m. on Blackhoe Mountain. Some guests take the two-hour tour for fun. Others, like myself, have ulterior motives. Really excited to head out on a tour today and learn a little bit more about avalanche awareness and kind of interested in maybe getting into backcountry skiing. Oh great, you're gonna have a great time. This is just a little introduction that will open your eyes to what type of courses you need to take, what kind of gear you need to buy, and what type of groups you need to get associated with before you start heading out there. We'll probably do one run just to assess your skiing ability, and then we'll tailor the, uh, the avalanche tour from there. Sounds great, let's head out. Great. The first part of the tour brings us down to the weather station at the base of the Cat Skinner chair. Weather is the architect of all avalanches. Everything about weather contributes to whether the snow is going to stay or snow is going to move. This station gathers information such as air temperature and accumulated snowfall. Basically, the mountain's vitals, which are assessed by the weather forecaster and Blackcomb Ski Patrol crew. Maps at the patrol hut illustrate the names of all the avalanche areas within Whistler Blackcomb boundaries that patrol needs to mitigate. I think a lot of people take it for granted that they're skiing in a safe area and they don't really understand what exactly goes into opening it up and keeping everyone safe for the day. There's a group of highly trained individuals in there who go out every single morning and they make sure that it's not dangerous. All right, so we're at the top of the Beacon Basin here. Uh, this is one of the best resources that the ski hill has for honing your avalanche skills, uh, especially in the Companion Rescue Department. Transceivers, sometimes called beacons, are planted under the snow in this training demonstration area, simulating a skier trapped beneath an avalanche. As part of the tour, Mikey unpacks the lifeline of a backcountry rider to demonstrate their use. Pinpoint exactly where the victim is underneath the surface. The beacon is absolutely useless unless you have a shovel and a probe that are in your pack at all times. Mikey switches his beacon signal from transmit to search and then zigzags back and forth, honing in on the signal. Once found, a probe is used to locate the body, or bag in this case. Each action requires specific systematic steps. There's a lot to learn. Even shoveling has its own specific techniques that can save a life. But again, this tour is just an introduction, a taste of what's to come. There's a lot to know when traveling into the backcountry. The next step would be taking an avalanche skills training course. Get your level one. It's about a three day course. It'll give you the necessary tools to start learning. Curious minds can begin here though. It's a place to have some fun and not to mention gain a greater appreciation of what the outstanding men and women of Whistler Blackcomb Ski Patrol do to keep us riding safe all season long. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. Now those tours run every day at 12.30 and you can meet at the Avalanche Awareness Centre across from Solar Coaster. Well, if you miss one of our episodes, not to worry, they're online in HD. Just visit youtube.com slash Whistler Shaw. Go see the sky, we're your local voice. Coming up, 
A lot of people have dairy allergies, so a lot of the nut milks provide an alternative so that they can still enjoy a nice creamy beverage. We discover how to make your own organic almond milk. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Hairstyling and color services for Heather Butts are provided by The Loft Salon. TheLoftSalon.com Hi folks, Don Taylor here. Need a lift? At Levin Machinery, they sell, rent, lease, and service machinery, big and small, for your material handling needs. And they offer certified training. Stack it, reach it, lift it. Love it. One in three Canadians know someone with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I'm one of those Canadians. September is World Alzheimer's Month and the Alzheimer's Society of BC wants you to get involved. Use your creative ideas, your outstanding talents and your sizzling passions. We make it easy to create a unique fundraising event or join in someone else's. Do anything for Alzheimer's and help support people with dementia, their caregivers and research for a cure. Let's get started at anythingforalzheimers.ca today. Welcome back to Go See This Guy. I'm your host, Heather Butts, in Whistler Village, a place where being fit and eating healthy is very important. But let's be honest, buying healthy food can be costly. And the do-it-yourself method, well, that can be overwhelming as well. But in this episode of our DIY, we show you that it doesn't need to be costly or confusing. And making your own almond milk is a great place to start. It is 2014, it's a new year, time to make some resolutions, eating healthy, and Nicolette Richet, you are the owner of the Green Mustache Juice Bar and health consultant, and the juice bar is new to Whistler. It is, we just opened it just before Christmas. And it's right in the marketplace, perfect spot to grab a healthy bite to eat, and today we're talking about almond milk, you're going to show me how to make it, everyone's drinking it these days. Yes, a lot of people have health allergies and dairy allergies specifically, so they have to stay away from all dairy. So a lot of the nut milks provide an alternative so that they can still enjoy a nice creamy beverage but without having to consume the dairy. Okay, how hard is it? Because making your own almond milk just yeah. scares me. Exactly. Um, as it did me when I first made it, but it's actually the easiest thing you can make in less than three minutes. Okay. So what you want to do first is you want to take your raw organic almonds preferably mm -hmm. and when you purchase them they're usually going to have a little bit of dust or fiber on them um, and almonds are just naturally coated in things that are not easy for us to digest so you want to actually soak these in water for about eight hours and so when you soak them in the water you're going to get a solution that looks like this with your almonds and this murky solution. You're going to rinse these clean just before you go to make your almond milk and then you'll have a nice fresh cup of organic soaked almonds. Health benefit to soaking them yourself and making it yourself? Is it cheaper? Is it? You're going to save on cost, you're going to save on packaging, you can make it and ensure that it's always fresh, there's no preservatives and that you're just getting all the nutrients that you put in it, into it yourself. Okay, so soaking almonds for about eight hours so far, I can mm -hmm. do that. Okay, easy, done. And so then you're gonna take your soaked almonds, so you're gonna pour your almonds in, and it's about a cup of almonds for this full container for two liters of water. All right. And, and then what you'd wanna do next is take something, you don't have to sweeten it, but some people do like to add a little bit of sweetness to it. And so what I'm gonna use today is dates, organic dates, and remove the pits, and then you just pop two or three dates in there. You can also use honey, maple syrup, or molasses. Any type of natural sugar. Exactly, you wanna avoid the white sugars as much as possible and just stick to whole foods and what came straight from Mother Nature. Perfect, and then we're just adding water. That's correct, easy. And so you're gonna add your water. Soak the almonds, throw them in a blender, add some dates, add some water. This isn't as scary as it sounds. It's not, it's so easy and then pop your lid on, make sure it's tight, and then we're gonna blend. You wanna blend maybe 20, 30 seconds. Great. And then what you need is a nut milk bag, okay. or a nut milk strainer. So these you can buy at most health food stores. You're gonna pop it into a pitcher or a bowl. And then you're just pouring it through the bag and the bag just acts as a strainer. Exactly. I'm not even seeing any chunks of almond though. It's no, really, this really, really purifies fine. it. 
And then what this is going to do is just going to catch all of the fiber from the almond milk. And then what you do is you just squeeze the bag, let all the beautiful almond milk drip right through. And it's kind of like milking a cow. <laughs> Just squeeze the bag, let the almond milk come through. Exactly. And there we have it. That was a few simple, easy steps. Simply yep. soak your almonds overnight, eight hours. About eight hours should do it. Rinse them and then pop them in the blender, add the dates, and then strain the milk. And you'll have fresh almond milk every single day. That sounds perfect. And I bet it tastes delicious. And it does taste delicious. It's amazing. Thanks so much for showing us how to make your own homemade Almond milk. Yeah, you're welcome. My pleasure. It really is as easy as one, two, three. And believe me, if I can do it, so can you. And maybe if you're having some problems, just head to the green mustache and ask Nicolette. I'm sure she'd be happy to help. Well, now we're gonna introduce you to Sam Tudor. He moved to Vancouver to study at UBC, bringing with him his guitar and a unique tone he crafted while growing up in the woods at Williams Lake. I could have sworn the light was going down. I could have said there was shadows. UBC student Sam Tudor brought his music with him when he moved here from his home outside Williams Lake. He also brought with him an interesting perspective in his writing, having had a more rural upbringing than most of his generation. That a brave new world is not beneath the ground. Where I grew up was a research station um, called Gavin Lake Camp. Um, the nearest town was by bus an hour and a half away, so uh, I would ride the bus for an hour and a half there and an hour and a half back every day uh, to school. And so I got a lot of time. I would just listen to music the whole time and read books and stuff. Um, and I think growing up in that place, in a, that pretty remote, um, isolated place, the cool thing for me was that I didn't have a sort of context of of where my music should fit. Digging deeper holes cause we're rich and poor and bold. Fill it up with money and we all do what we're told. One of the songs she performed here, Prosperity, is actually about current events happening up where you're from. Near where I grew up, they're building a big old open pit mine named Prosperity. Everyone's on a different side of, of what should happen. And um, so that song is just me sort of trying to work through it in my own brain because I use metal. I, I, I have an iPod made of, with copper in it probably and um, you know who am I to criticize a ginormous mind but also like when there's something that feels so um, wrong on such a basic level about doing that uh, it's sort of time to rethink what your priorities are and, and think about why you have those priorities. So you've come down to Vancouver, attending UBC. What's the story? Why are you in Vancouver of all places? I came here for school, is the official thing. But uh, school's kind of just an excuse to play music in Vancouver. Where I'm living now in Vancouver is so drastically different from, uh, from where I grew up is good, I think. Uh, and it's nice to have that contrast and to, to sort of live on both ends of the spectrum and, and figure out what I really want to do. Now you've got one record, uh, Animals and Arson. You recorded it while you were in high school in a closet at the high school? Yeah, uh, and I sort of like to think that I like tricked the school into letting me make a record there. Um, but really I had, I had a couple really supportive music teachers who, who made it part of my grade. And every day when I went to school I'd just like retire to this womb-like alcove and, and um, get, to, get to record music. Darkness, darkness, keep them there, leaving me alone. Yeah, leaving me alone. What's new music like right now? What are you working on? In the past, I just sort of wrote a song and, and you know, threw it out there. And, and this time, I'm, I'm like, ah, really making sure it's, everything is exactly the way I think it should be and been very analytical. And um, it sounds a lot different. It sounds a lot different from anything I did before, actually. It's things that people can sing along to. Tear away your standing ground for a pale, 
fluorescent glow. A sample of Sam's music and his upcoming show dates are posted at samtutor.bandcamp.com. At the UBC Museum of Anthropology, I'm Paul McClellan. Now, Sam does have a few music videos from his time near Williams Lake. And you can see those on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash go see to sky. Later in the show. A lot of it is just about deepening awareness in the moment. And awareness is, is so transformative. It's time to explore yoga therapy. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Heather Butt's wardrobe is fitted by Peak Performance. Peakperformance.com Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV volunteer program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV takes you from around the world to across the country to your own backyard. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV gives you the inside information on the outside world daily on Shaw TV. Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, in beautiful Whistler Village. We're heading to the city for our next story. Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapy is a holistic approach that bridges the gap between yoga and mind-body psychology. And our Johanna Ward was brave enough to take the camera with her on her first session. Lifting from the core, come back to downward facing dog. For many, the practice of yoga is both spiritual and physical. The OM, access to a space within. For Shivani Wells, it can also be mental. A lot of it is just about deepening awareness in the moment, and awareness is, is so transformative. Shivani has over 10 years experience as a yoga teacher and yoga therapist. Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapy is a holistic approach that bridges the gap between aspects of yoga and body-mind psychology. Why do people come to you for yoga therapy? What, what are most people looking for? Sometimes it's like people feel kind of stuck in their lives or they feel stressed or a lot of times they're noticing that something that's happening for them internally or something that some trauma that's happened or something emotionally, they feel it manifesting in their body. The therapy is conducted on a large soft mat in a private room at Y Yoga in Vancouver. Shivani starts each session with a centering. Okay, so when you're ready, you can close your eyes which is just a way to sort of shift the awareness inward from the day and check in and just sort of notice uh, where they're at. Where am I at? This is for work, but it's still personal. As we explore my breathing, Shivani notices that I point to the right side of my chest. I'm not even aware of it until she tells me. Yeah, it's like, it, maybe, I guess stuck would be a good word. It's darker and it, like there's not, this part's not moving. There, definition of stuck. <laughs> <laughs> The next part of the session is body work, a combination of touch, assisted movement and dialogue, a combination I find to be quite revealing. So tell me more about you feeling like you need to help me. Yeah, just like I should be doing something. So it's the... And yes, I just heard the word should there. <laughs> I should. heard it too. <laughs> ah, I heard it too. <laughs> tell me about should. We all know should is wrong, no should. The work is really for the clients to use their body as a way to access their feelings internally. So it's with the belief that everything is connected um, and we store our, our traumas, our memories, our beliefs, um, our stories really in our bodies. For me, the experience is varied. I'm getting information through physical sensations, colors, images. What are you noticing here? It's, uh, it's going to sound weird. I totally was like, I'm at a playground. <laughs> what, playground. what does that mean? <laughs> it makes me feel younger right there. Mm. Yeah. Lighter, younger, lighter. 
That awareness empowers us to, to move through and start to work through some of that stuff and, and to make changes in the way that we are with ourselves and our lives. So you kind of feel it all Treatment plans are unique to each client, anywhere from just three sessions to ongoing weekly visits. Each Phoenix Rising yoga therapy session closes with an integration, which is a time to reflect. See what from the experience really seems to stand out the most for you. I recall using the word should a few times. <laughs> and there's always a meditation where they look within for guidance so that the sort of the answers or the guidance or the um, steps to move forward always come from within them. Okay. Hey, thank wow. you so much for Thank you. That was amazing. <laughs> Well, Johanna Ward gets bonus points from me on that one, doing yoga and taking the camera with her. All right, we've had yoga, organic restaurants, and almond milk. Maybe this show has been a little too healthy. For me, I like to delve into a sweet treat. After all, it's all in moderation. And when I need that, Sugar Mama Pastries helps me satisfy that sweet tooth. girly girl. Kind of quirky too. Yeah. Whimsical. Fun. It doesn't get much girlier than this. Baking in a cozy kitchen, pink apron and all. You can tell Sabrina Perfit of Sugar Mama Pastries isn't your average Whistlerite. They're just wee little cakes in themselves and you can make them so pretty. White fluffy icing piped onto mini cupcakes as delicate as a wedding gown. But these beauties don't need to be saved for a special occasion. This baker slash edible artist can always be found at the Whistler Farmer's Market. Last week I had a fellow stand at my table and eat five cupcakes. He just stood there and just ate, handed me more money, ate another one, handed me more money, ate another Till he was full. Happy, happy, happy. Yeah, that's good. Perfit insists the unique flavors, like her spicy zucchini cupcake, come from the love and care used to create these decadent pieces from scratch, using local ingredients when possible. After all, an artist's blank canvas can be the most important part. Her favorite mixture and most popular treat, the red velvet cupcake. Oh, they are so pretty. The combination of the red with the milk being added to it turns it this bright, dark fuchsia pink. And then you add the dry ingredients and it becomes a different color and then you bake it. Rolling the fondant icing and creating unique designs that top her cakes, Sugar Mama Pastries is as much about design as it is taste. You know, each, each little rosette is its own little challenge. And, and I, I delight in making a beautiful rosette. And I really enjoy watching people eat them and seeing the satisfaction that they get. Like most people in this rugged mountain town, she loves to explore and create treats even outdoor enthusiasts will enjoy, encouraging everyone to satisfy their sweet tooth. It's a treat. It's a sweet treat. It's, um, it just makes you feel good. Especially when it's created in a small home kitchen that sits tucked away on Blueberry Hill. Well, you can find Sugar Mama Pastries at some of our winter farmer's markets in Whistler and down in Squamish. Well, that does it for this episode of Go See to Sky. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.
Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice.